Hello friends, uh, this is Rishabh and I welcome you to the Python verse series and uh, well I'm, I'm really grateful to have you here. Uh, this series is created out of uh, like the, the sense of creativity and just to have some fun and learning with Python. So yeah, let's let's start with the prerequisites. This is the video one. I will be talking about some basic prerequisites. Uh, the first being some basics of computer science like it would be great if you know certain things about uh, the terminal or the command prompt in Windows how exactly you can invoke such commands how you can install softwares like all those basic things nothing of advanced sort is required so I think if, if you are planning to learn Python I'm assuming that you have these basics clear then enthusiasm to learn programming in Python that is something which is very important. Uh, you have to be very enthusiastic about uh, how exactly to program in Python, how exactly, uh, what exactly programming is in general. So that is very important. Then uh, Python 3.10 plus, like any version of Python 3.10 installed on the system. E even though most of the examples which we are going to use, they should work on the, the previous versions also but uh, it would be great so we are going to use the latest version and we recommend the same and then this can be installed from this link i'll be sharing this link in the description that is python.org this is the official website of python let me quickly show you this so this is the official website you can go to the downloads page so i think i see this for mac because i am using the mac operating system uh, if you are using windows you can go for windows if you're unix linux uh, you can go for linux and so on uh, awesome. So th this is it with the prerequisites. If I go to the methodology, well, as I mentioned, simplicity is very important. I, I really want to experiment. I really want to see uh, whether we can make it simpler to learn Python or to learn programming in general. And then fun, again, very important, creativity. So uh, what I really intend to do in this Python verse series is I, I really want to do some creative stuff want to do some creative exercises and see how it goes whether it makes uh, you know learning python or programming a little easier or not and along the way i really want to connect with some amazing people uh, like you so that uh, like uh, we can probably be on this journey together then if i talk about agenda uh, for this specific uh, video so first of all, uh, like as I discuss agenda, I think it would be great if I if I talk about things in line. So introduction to Python. What exactly is Python? Well, uh, if I have to keep it very simple, uh, just like we human beings uh, interact with each other using some language. So let's say uh, right now I'm talking in English. Sometimes we talk in Hindi or Punjabi or let's say some other uh, other language could be Japanese could be German uh, so there are so many languages in the world which allow human beings to interact imagine if if you if you weren't uh, able to understand some language you won't be able to interact with the next person so for example if I'm talking to somebody who only knows Japanese or who only understands Japanese and I on the other hand only understand English or Hindi then it may be difficult for us to interact. Now, when it comes to machines, when we want to talk to machines, because at the end of the day, we are kind of giving the commands to the machines to perform certain tasks. And for that, there has to be a language which machine can understand. At the core, machine understands binary. Maybe we will explore more about uh, this binary thing in, in some future video. But uh, we have some high level languages, which allows human beings to uh, say things in English like I will be writing uh, the commands of Python you will see that they very closely resemble the English language a very high level right but at the same time there is a program called as interpreter it takes the commands and it basically gives them to the processor in the way it uh, understands right so that conversion is taken care of by the interpreter Python is an interpreted language so whatever we want to uh, ask our machine to do like whatever I want uh, to be done by my machine I have to communicate it uh, via some medium 
all the programming languages are basically providing us with those medium with that medium and uh, so so in a way programming languages are basically allowing us to talk to the machines uh, in very simple terms right and so in 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 this series as well we will see that what are the different ways in which we are interacting with the machines what are the things we want the machine to do and how exactly we have to give those commands now uh, talking about the editor uh, we are going to use vs code in our videos but uh, you are free to choose any other editor as well if i talk about python well there are online editors available these days you can use them and uh, you can use jupyter notebooks uh, you can use google collab uh, you can use pycharm and there are other editors as well so uh, like whatever code we are going to write in this series you should be able to write it uh, with the help of any editor there are absolutely no restrictions on that now uh, well let's get started by checking the python version so if you have to check what version of python is installed in your system uh, this is the very first command which I'm going to write. You have to write Python, then you have to write hyphen hyphen version, hit enter, and you will see the version which is installed for you. So here we can see that we have Python 3.11.1 uh, installed on the system. As I mentioned that uh, it is recommended that you use the latest version, but uh, it should work. The code which we are going to write should work with the previous versions as well. Okay, cool. So the next thing which we want to talk about is how exactly we have to invoke the Python interpreter. Some of the very basic thing, uh, like one of the very basic things. So I have to type in the Python command and I have to hit enter. And this basically invokes my Python interpreter. Here I can write the commands and they will be executed by my interpreter, right? So whenever somebody refers to invoking the Python interpreter, this is essentially what they're talking about. Now, moving ahead, we have uh, the basic data type uh, and their examples. So every language, well, in every language, we have to communicate some data. So uh, some data basically, uh, because that is a basic unit of communication. We are always talking about certain, representing certain ideas. And for that, we need these data types, right? Uh, if I have to represent some quantity, so for example, how many planets are there? How many followers uh, do I have? What is the population of a certain country? Then uh, vehicles uh, I own. Then the number of students which are uh, attending a specific uh, session. What is the pulse rate? So all these things can be expressed by using integer data type, right? So uh, when we say integer, we mean that the, the numeric values without a decimal point, right? Similarly, then there are uh, certain other quantities uh, and to represent those quantities, we need floating point numbers. For example, if I want to represent temperature or let's say pressure or distance, like all these quantities like velocity, if I have to represent, then I will need decimal points as well. So for such uh, data types, we have something called as float, right? Similarly, uh, there are times when we want to talk about things which have a true or a false value. That means a yes or a no. Like uh, if I have to give an example, will it rain tomorrow? The answer would be the yes or no. Will I pursue uh, medical or non-medical after my 10th class? Well, the answer will be either be yes or no. Uh, will I pass or fail the exam? Uh, the answer will be either yes or no. So for such things, we have Boolean values. They can have a true value. They can have a false value, right? Then we have string types. If we have to represent things like names, uh, the, the name of the car, or what kind of game we like to play, or what exactly uh, is my hobby, all these, all these things I can represent using string, right? Now that we have, in, uh, let's say, invoked the Python interpreter, let me just give some examples. So let's say, uh, let, let me talk about satellite. Uh, forgive me if this is not correct spelling I'm assuming they are so I have one natural satellite right and now if I see my satellite variable so this one value is stored inside of this variable and I think this is the right uh, time to point out that Python happens to be a dynamically typed language what it means is that I don't need to specify that satellite is an integer right 
in some languages you have to write things like int satellite equals one but in python that is not required uh, now you can check what is the type of a variable so satellite is a variable which is holding the value one now which means that whenever you are going to refer to satellite you are basically referring to this value one now if i check the type of satellite i will see that it is integer type right integer means that uh, numeric values without any floating points right now if i write let's say some new variable let me say distance now again i'm not talking about units let's assume we are talking in kilometers for now but yeah if i say distance 3.4 now distance is automatically interpreted by the interpreter to be of type float i really don't need to be explicit here this is implied in the python language uh, because it's dynamic right if i check uh, the type of distance i can see that it's a float now let me write another variable let's say will it rain tomorrow and the answer is let's say false right so if i now try to see what value is stored inside of this i will see that this is a false value and if i try to check the type of this variable then it will be a boolean type right so it's a boolean type right uh, now let's say i want to write name let's say programming language equals python so such data can be stored using uh like now programming language is my string if i check the type of programming language it will turn out to be a string right cool so here we go awesome so yeah it's important that we know that uh, what exactly is the data which we are trying to represent based on that we can decide uh, what type we can use to represent that data uh, in the upcoming videos we will see how exactly we can uh, express uh, let's say some complex data types like if i have a sequence of data or if i have key value pairs we will talk about them when the time comes now let's talk about some mathematical operations well the python interpreter can be used as a mathematical calculator as well right so for example let's say i have got uh, two variables uh, let me name them as a which is let's say 12 then b which is something like let's say 40 right now if i have to perform add operation i can use the add operator which is a plus b and i will see the result of the addition right if i do b minus a i will see the result of subtraction that is 40 minus 12 uh, similarly if I have to multiply a and b I can do that as well that is a star star basically represent multiplication so here we see the multiplication of a and b then we can perform division as well uh, I can simply do b by a and it returns me a floating point value now here I would like to share one more insight if you want the answer as an integer what you can do is you can do b uh, slash slash a that gives you the result as an integer so this part is skipped so this is important in certain scenarios we will see as we program uh, the problems the real problems then i want let's say only the remainder what i can do is i can do b mode a so here i get 4 because uh, 12 into 12 times 3 is 36 and the remainder is 4 and that is what is depicted here now i can use a raised to the power b so let's say if i want to find out a raised to the power b so for example 5 raised to the power 2 i can use the double star operator that is 5 star star 2 it will give me the result 25 which is 5 raised to the power 2 cool so yes uh, this is how we can use python as a calculator and that is what that is that brings us to the end of uh, the first video I hope it was not too fast. You can share your uh, feedback in the comments. And yeah, with that, I'm very thankful to you for joining uh, this Python word series. And you can connect with us. Well, you can you can subscribe to this channel. 
you can send me a connect request on LinkedIn. Uh, I, I will be sharing this link in the description. And of course, you can write me an email over my Gmail account, which is gorishabio at the gmail.com. Uh, with this, uh, well, thanks a lot for joining and I see you in the next video. Bye-bye.